What's going on, my people? Just a quick update for all of you on the first week of orientation being done. Um, it was something completely new and different in my life. So uh, really, really appreciated the experience while being humbled at the same time. Um, Friday, let's see, Friday, um, really cold. Every morning's cold here. <laughs> You're going out like, you know, before the sun rises and it's, it's chilly. Um, anyway, um, get to uh, the classroom and uh, getting ready to sit down and the lead instructor there uh, calls out and says, Mr. Joe. And uh, I turn around and um, he basically uh, tells me I'm missing my uh, license and if I have it on me. And uh, you know, I had my uh, paper license and, uh, and also my hard license, which technically you're not supposed to have, but there was a lapse so what, what happened was that after I completed my DMV test and passed, um, I went ahead and got my endorsements, but they had already printed out my uh, commercial license and sent it to me. And so when I got my endorsements done, they gave me a paper license. I'm supposed to turn in my old license, so I only have one license, but you know, uh, I had two. So I have to destroy my uh, uh, hard license. Uh, but when I came to the orientation here, they asked me for uh, to take a picture of my license, and I took a picture of the hard license, which is not my most recent license. So um, uh, then I corrected it right away by saying, oh, this one doesn't have my endorsements. My paper one does, but my paper one didn't have my picture on it, so I figured, you know, they probably want a hard, hard copy, like the license of um, the hard license instead of the uh, paper license. Anyway, so I go ahead and uh, correct it. Well, after I corrected it, um, several days later, uh, the correction wasn't in the system for one reason or another. And then so he said he needed to see that license and then he needed to make copies of it. And so I gave him the paper license, he made copies. Crazy thing is, is later on that day, I asked him about it and he said, uh, yeah, well actually, if you didn't have that copy on you, I would have had to send you home. <laughs> so. I would have been sent home for not having um, just a paper copy, even if I had my hard license, uh, you know, with my as, as an identification and shows that I'm certified. I even have my um, my California DMV app that that has my license in there, so you know, I, I have identification on me. But they needed me to have the most recent commercial license on me, and in my case, it would be the paper license. So anyway, um, yeah, I mean, I would have had my license, but there was a chance that they would have sent me home if I didn't have it on me that day, if I left it back in the hotel room you know, for one reason or another, or if it wasn't uh, on my person. Anyway, so that was that. was that. So when we got there, we actually got to go out uh, before the sun came up. And so we were in the yard. Uh, we started doing uh, what they call a pre-trip inspection and an air break inspection. I, I know you've heard me talk about those things uh, before and I passed the test on those and whatnot. So I have to do these pre-trip inspections um, every day before I go out with my truck. I have to make sure that the truck is in good condition. And it may sound like redundant or monotonous, but it's something you just do. I mean, you wouldn't do that with your uh, regular car, right? You just jump in your car, turn the ignition and go, right? But in, for a truck, for safety reasons and for everything to just be working, and you don't want any problems that out there on the road. So you, you're going to be going around checking pretty much all aspects of your truck. And then you have to make sure your brakes are working. You don't have just regular brakes. These are air brakes and they have air compressors and it's, you know, it's got to stop up to 80,000 pounds of uh, weight. So... Um, yeah, the, the air brakes have to be tested. So anyway, in the morning, we go ahead and do the uh, uh, pre-trip inspection and I go ahead and do the pre-trip ins inspection and the air brake test. But my uh, pre-trip inspection, it's still dark, you know, so I'm using my headlamp flashlight um, on, on, the, uh, on, my, on top of my cap. And uh, I also have my, uh, my checklist, you know, they give you a checklist, so I don't want to miss anything. I'm still, you know, I'll probably be using this checklist for some time. I'm walking around the truck and as I bend the corner in front of the truck, something smacks me in my face right here. Boom, you know, and I, I was like, oh! And I look and I ran right into the hood mirror with my face. And they, this is the thing is, during this week you have information overload. They tell you about a bunch of stuff. But, uh, you know, I think the, you know, I'm not that tall. So when, uh, when I go by the, um, the side view mirrors next to the cab, um, those kind of like barely, go over my head so it's not i don't i don't really have a problem you know seeing that or hitting those but when the hood is uh when the engine compartment hood is down 
uh, and uh, or open and that thing is that hood mirror is sticking out it's right here and so I thought I was gonna get a shiner today but I hit it flush right here in the face <laughs> so yeah and uh, they talked about it they said you got to be careful you're gonna hit this thing you know if you're not paying attention people do it all the time and I was thinking eh, I'm not gonna be that guy right but I was that guy <laughs> and it made such a loud thud you know the instructors are kind of laughing at me because you know I wasn't paying attention but I have my list and I'm reading and walking you know so one thing good about, uh, like I said before in the previous video, um, one thing good about uh, being here early in the year is that we have more trainers. We had about, what, uh, I would say like about four, five people sent home already. Uh, not really sent home, but went home. Some were sent home, some, you know, um, they had personal things going on or whatever, and they, they just went. So our class size kind of shrank. And then they had double the amount of teachers uh, this uh, this week. So um, for this training session, actually, I got to go one-on-one -on -one with my uh, instructor. So they rotated a lot of the students around. So uh, I got to go one-on-one -on -one with my uh, instructor. And um, yeah, he he was guiding me through. First time, you know, really driving an automatic attached, uh, uh, having a 53-foot uh, uh, trailer attached to it. And uh, so when I was driving it around, um, um, it was it was a new experience. I have to, you know I have to watch out because I have to make extra wide turns and uh, be be mindful of my movements. I have to make large movements basically, right? So anyway, um, they have us. Uh, he had had me first uh, maneuver in the yard, and it's there's a lot of tight turns and there's a lot of maneuvers that you have to do where you only have a little bit of space. We had uh, this one way. Uh, it was almost like an alleyway that had two uh, two trailers in a V coming together with just enough opening for you to uh, have your uh, truck go through. But the thing is, is if it was just your, you know, your tractor, just your truck, not a problem. Like you just maneuver and go through, like it's like a tight space, even with your car, right? Or something like that. But you're coming out of a turn and then straightening out to fit in through this. So if you have to be pretty pre precise on this, and if you're not precise, you're gonna hit that trailer to the, the two park trailers or you're gonna grind, you're gonna hit something. So um, yeah, he guided me through and I went ahead and experienced that. And I was like, whoa, I, I did it, I could do it, you know, and which was pretty cool. And then they had me doing a backup maneuver, uh, a straight back. So I, I, they had me pulled forward, straighten up, and then go straight back all the way into a, uh, basically a parking spot uh, where I can uh, park the trailer. Anyway, I went straight back and um, I got taught at the CDL school driving a 28-footer. You know, uh, they call a pup, right? Twenty-eight foot trailer, and those uh, um, swing. They're more. They're they're a lot more sensitive, right? So you make a sudden movement, and the and the uh, trailer will break really fast. Uh, well, the fifty-three footer, even though it's longer, it's a lot smoother and it's easier to control. And another thing too is that this is an automatic truck, so I'm not sitting there messing around with the clutch or anything like that. And it just. Yeah, overall, there's less things to preoccupy your mind, and it's, uh, it worked out being smooth. So when I started backing up, I just made slight, you know, um, like a quarter turn pumps really fast, pump it and straightening out, pump it and straightening out, and just it's just like when you're when you got something going and you just tap it, tap it, tap it to straighten it out, and it was like butter. That thing went straight. I barely had to adjust it, um, and every time I would make small adjustments, and just went, and so I went straight back. And during that time, uh, uh, there were another instructor actually uh, complimented me, uh, good job, you know, so uh, that felt good. And then so um, after that, uh, we got a chance to go out on the road. He was driving. He showed me basically how um, how to drive around basically around uh, the industrial part of Phoenix. And uh, just me getting accustomed to him making turns and uh, him giving me verbal instructions on what he's doing, while, why he's doing it the way he is doing it and what to watch out for. Uh, so it was really good, you know, it's like uh, being in the passenger seat, I'm in the passenger seat obviously and um, watching a professional truck driver uh, do his thing and then him telling me exactly what he's doing. So good first hand knowledge, it was really good. Yeah, he also had me drive around the whole parking lot. After that, uh, he had me uh, start doing some backing, so 45 degree backing and uh, uh, basically, you you get to an area, you shoulder up, and then you do a twelve o'clock, and then a nine o'clock, and then you back in, straighten up, back in, straighten up, back in. Like it's kind of like that maneuver. Um, the first one was 
just an average spot. Um, he guided me and, and did okay. And I first time backing up a 53 footer. So I, you know, even though he helped me, I felt really happy. I was, I felt, oh yeah, I can do this, you know, I'm pretty confident. Uh, second time, a little bit tighter, a little bit more challenging. Uh, once again, he would, he didn't help me this time. He actually asked me now, what are you going to do? What would you do? And then he would say something like, uh, yeah, that was, I was just, I was just going to suggest that you should go out and look when, when I was already on my way to go out and look. And then he would, so he was very encouraging. I like this, the way he teaches. He's, he doesn't, he's not very verbal. He's, he doesn't say a bunch of stuff, but at the same time, uh, he'll pinpoint out when, you know, he needs to interject or he, he would pinpoint out things that I'm not doing uh, right or the things that I need to know before doing something. So he's, he's pretty accurate. He's very knowledgeable. Um, he's a really good teacher. So, um, but then I don't get this level of anxiety or stress and whatnot, you know, like uh, sometimes when uh, some teachers are a little bit more, you know, verbal uh, and, and when you make a mistake, they'll just, you know, rightly so, they will, you know, correct you, but in a, in a strong, firm manner. So you, you learn and, and, and you're not making those mistakes, right? Uh, but a lot of that, with my personality, I get a little bit, you know, my anxiety level tends to go up. So I, you know, I could still learn in those, under those situations, but I would rather prefer this situation where, you know, he says what he needs to say it at the right times he needs to say it, and the rest of it is pretty much up to me to do, you know? Um, and, uh, you know, it's almost like, okay, here's the problem, go figure it out. You need to do this. This is what, these are the parameters I want you to use, now do it. And that's basically like, it's like a, you know, like a puzzle. And, and then at the, at the time when I'm making a critical mistake or making uh, or headed down the wrong path, then he would stop me and say, wait, now think about what you're doing. And, and, and he would have me resolve it, you know, at the right moments. Anyway, so that tighter backing worked out well. Okay. So third backing is, is a little bit more challenging and it worked out well. And so I'm like, all right, I, I think I got this, you know, I feel, I feel really confident. And uh, um, so the fourth bank backing, he has me, you know, do what I need to do in a different scenario, right? Once again, and I'm sitting there, you know, full of confidence and I'm, I'm backing this thing up. And uh, in, it, it's gotta be a lot more tighter because we didn't have a lot of uh, space to pull forward. So uh, I'm, I'm cranking this thing and this thing is bending, like jackknifing like this, like this is going, 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 going. And my, my um, trailer, trailer uh, tandem tires, right? they start uh they start the, uh doing what we call a pivot and it just stays in place and starts moving like this which is it's just like a beautiful sight to see when you're when you're doing it right so anyway um i'm getting all geeked out with trucking anyway so <laughs> we uh we i start seeing this pivot and i got this grin on my face watching this pivot and i'm not paying attention to my cab getting close as the angles are kind of closing in my cab getting closer and closer to the trailer and right when the rubber back part of my trailer touches the, uh, uh, I mean, the rubber back part of my tractor touches the trailer, I hear this, hey, and I, sh I, I, sh I jumped, I got shocked, right? And I realized I hit, you know, um, I hit the, uh, the trailer with the rubber part of the back. There was no damage or anything, but I went too far, like I jackknifed basically, right? But, you know, it's backing up and I'm going butt slow. So I, I stopped immediately. And he caught me before there was actual damage done to the truck, right? But he was, that's the first time I heard him yell. He never yelled, you know. Usually people are loud because you're in a truck. But even then, he was very, he's very quiet, you know. He only, he'll walk up to you and talk to you instead of yelling or, or shouting in a loud voice. And so when I heard him uh, go, hey, it just shook me up. And then this, and this is the funny thing is, is right before this, uh, right before this backup maneuver, um, I actually complimented him and said, you know what? I love the way you teach. You're, you're such a good teacher. I feel like I'm totally getting this. And, uh, uh, you know, and he felt, yeah, he's like, oh yeah, that's good for you. And he gave me a fist bump and you, you know, and so, um, he was, he was glad that I was, you know, getting a lot out of it, but I was like really appreciative of him. And then the minute, you know, the minute I say that I, I make a goof like that, right? And so he actually said, you know, I don't want to have to. And I said, you know what? I needed to hear that. I needed to hear him, you know, yell and like stop me because if not, I would, I might have done damage to the uh, uh, tractor trailer, you know. So, um, but it was a wake up call. It was like a jolt, you know. And so, uh, yeah, you, you can't get too comfortable and confident. You have to be confident but cautious, right? So, uh, uh, checking everything, and and uh, I'm sitting there with a grin, looking at my tandems in that pivot going. You know? <laughs> but the whole time, my uh, 
tra tractor and trailer getting closer and closer and closer together and you know I, I had to stop and I had to um, counter steer and straighten myself out that was you know it was, it was and that was also it was kind of getting too late you know because um, I, I needed to straighten out so I could back up easier or else I would have been in too much of an angle anyway but that's what happened yeah so eventually after that situation I corrected myself and then um, finished the fourth backup fine he had me do another one the fifth one which was fine um, that one was where we uh, parked for the for the night um, so we parked it and then we closed everything up and, and uh, uh, we did a post-trip inspection and so uh, we made sure that everything was was the integrity of the truck was there and everything was good and we didn't have any issues uh, after we drove the truck around that day um, so it was a good day. I learned a lot. Uh, it's been a good week. That was that was the last day of the week in class. And then yesterday, today's Sunday. Today's Sunday. So yesterday I had um, I spent uh, most of the day uh, uh, doing the study videos. Uh, so I I did pretty much the rest of the videos I could. Um, uh, and then I also uh, went ahead and went to the uh, OC to do my laundry and uh, spent time there. I, I met somebody, I met actually a couple people there uh, in the laundry room, but you realize as truckers, you're sitting in that truck all day by yourself, quiet. And so the minute you initiate conversation with some of these people that are, you know, not so introverted and they start talking with you, they, they will talk, 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 right? They will talk a lot. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's interesting because Today, even myself, I caught myself <laughs> talking to somebody and I couldn't stop talking because you don't have a chance to talk to people, you know? <laughs> and so this, this uh, you know, yesterday and today, I've been alone basically, right? So uh, it's it's funny because, so the, the minute you start, especially you start talking with, about trucking, because I was talking to this guy who's at my, who's in my class with me and we're at the same hotel. So, you know, once we start talking and, and I was talking, 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 he was, uh, I got to go. My Uber's here. And I felt like, oh, my gosh, I didn't like I talk too much. right? <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah. So this week uh, was a good week. I learned a lot. I uh, really appreciate it. Um, just a lot of information getting there and hopefully becoming a better trucker. I really liked what Schneider's doing. Um, they uh, they go through a lot. They give you a lot of information. I talked to somebody who's actually uh, with me in training and he he told me that he was at another company right before he was at Schneider. Um, when he went through orientation there, he he basically uh, watched one video on training, uh, and then uh, they basically told him, "If you want more information, look up videos on YouTube, <laughs> and, and you'll learn more." <laughs> so, but and then uh, they give you he gave he got some basic training, and then he he got thrown in with a trainer, and he went on the road with this trainer. Um, and as he was going through the on the road stuff, he was getting paid less than a hundred bucks a day, but the trainer was getting paid all the mileage. So whether he drove or the trainer drove, the trainer got credit for all the mileage. So what a lot of what what this creates is like a, um, a a strange situation. People get enticed to become trainers to make more money because you get both mileage for the trainee and your mileage, right? Um, so they sign up for it because, yeah, they want to make more money. It's normal, right? He would drive and then he would switch with the, uh, with this, with this guy and, uh, have him drive, but he didn't teach him anything. When he drove, uh, the trainer would sleep. Um, and so when the trainer sleeps, he does, he's basically driving on the highway for, you know, a few hours, stopping, driving some more, stopping, you know, but he's not doing any backing maneuvers. He's not getting taught any backing maneuvers. He's not getting taught anything about what's going on on the road um, because they're basically what they call team driving. They're taking turns driving so they can run the truck uh, as as many hours in the day as possible. So both both drivers get up to 11 hours of driving time legally. Even the stuff that you need to do, the ELD, electronic logging, logging you know, you have to um, log your hours and do that. And you have to be proficient in, in working the tablet. They give you tablets and you have to be proficient in working the tablets so um, you can track your hours, you can, you know, use the, uh, the trip planning. And there's a lot of different apps on there. Um, and, you know, you need to get taught that. But uh, this, this guy who was, who was in my school didn't get taught anything because the trainer would do everything and the trainee would just drive those miles. And after their time is up, and some companies, they go about like 50 hours or about a week. And other companies, they'll, they'll go up to like six weeks of, of doing this. 
Uh, but a lot of companies do this method, and uh, you know, but in but in Schneider you don't do that. You know, you don't waste time. They 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 make the training you know short, but they they're very uh, efficient in what they're doing. You know, you got you got a, a chunk of classroom time, but then you know they give you all the information, so you almost have to work. Like I'm gonna be going through the um, the handbook today that they give us it's almost 300 pages. So um, after this video, I'm gonna be spending the rest of the day doing the handbook. Yeah, but they give you videos on, on how to work the tablets, how to trip plan, how to do all that stuff. They show you hands-on already. They showed us how to hands-on put on, uh, chains on your uh, tires for when it snows. And then, um, uh, you know, things like uh, moving the tandems, you know, adjusting the trailer to the tandems and, a lot of that stuff, just hands-on, they're just showing you step-by-step um, step, everything you need to do. So the training is really good here. Um, so yeah, it's been a good good week and uh, tomorrow, early morning, we're going to start the second week. If I do well the second week uh, on Friday, they'll give me a certificate saying that I graduated from uh, the training portion of it, um, the orientation training portion of it. And then um, they will assign me to a what they call a training engineer. So. Um, when you get assigned to a training engineer, uh, you go out on the road for a week and, uh, uh, and you drive his truck. He sits in the passenger seat and evaluates you. He goes through a checklist of everything you're doing. And then at the same time, while I'm driving, I could ask him, I could pick his brain and just ask him. Every, he's not going to be sleeping in the back like other, other companies. He's going to be in the passenger seat monitoring everything that I do. So I could ask him um, everything. So he's going to basically have me drive his truck around do his loads back up and everything and the whole time he's observing giving me constructive criticism telling me what i'm doing wrong and then at the same time i could ask him all the questions i need to ask him because after that period after that week is over he'll if i'm ready he'll say i'm good enough to drive then i i'll get assigned the truck and then i'll be doing it on my own so it's a very concentrated time but i think it's an effective time where you know you can be out in the road for six weeks but if your trainer during those six weeks is sleeping in the sleeper uh, in the bed behind you and uh, you're just driving just along you know four or five hours or six hours a day and uh, um, and not really learning anything I think it's a waste of time waste of six weeks and during those six weeks you get you get crap pay you know like you get really bad pay whereas uh, here after that week is over you get in your truck and then you get you get uh, paid what you're hired to get paid so it'll be good um, yeah anyway so tomorrow's the start of the second week uh, Thank you for all your support. I will keep you posted and uh, uh, we'll, I'll catch up with you uh, sometime next week. I don't know if I'm gonna be doing a video right away, but uh, most likely um, when I get some downtime and have some energy, I'll go ahead and uh, put another video out. So until then, I will talk to you soon. Peace.